having me, by the way. Uh, because when I ran as an independent in June, nobody worried but the little guys. I never got invited for anything. But anyways, um, we talk about housing issue, but I didn't really, I, I really enjoy all the flashy, flowery presentation, by the way. I can tell you that. I really enjoy them. When it comes to the housing thing, I think that um, it's important for us to assess to see if people can actually maintain their housing. Right? So that's something to keep in mind. Um, one of the things that um, didn't come up um, is jobs. Um, and it's all related to the housing as well too because we can offer somebody a house, we can give them a free house to live, so here you go. But there are other pieces that, um, that we need to put in place um, so they can maintain that house. We just cannot throw all, um, money and say, here you go, here's half a million dollars and then um, nobody showed we're not getting um, result of that. It doesn't work that way. Um, another thing that came up as well too, um, they talk about what will happen if we have a cut in social services. Well, let me tell you what I will do if I was to be elected. The very first thing I would advocate for to make sure that all the people I'm on the sunshine list, we cut their salary first. Because in most, um, in fact, in this region here, we have over 5,000 people um, make it to the sunshine list. And, and many of them are um, working for a nonprofit organization. In fact, one of them locally um, um, that I know very well, the CEO makes quarter million dollars. But when you have somebody come, I'm a frontline worker by the way, so I get to see it. So when somebody comes and says, Ryan, I'm looking for housing, where do I go? I say, okay, you go to this place here. Oh, I cannot get there, I need a bus ticket. I have to have four or five people sign off for a bus ticket to get there. They don't have enough bus ticket. There's nobody available. And the CEO is very comfortable taking pictures, sending Instagram, this and that, and making a quarter million dollars. So I will advocate. The key point, it does not matter what level of government you are representing. You have, if you are really passionate about people, you have to be an advocate to make sure you get the work done. I sent an email to all the um, Kitchener candidates. Only two people responded, not realizing that I have the potential and there's that possibility that I can be the next mayor. So we have. So just think about that, right? So I do enjoy all the shiny presentation. And so the, the sunshine list, it, we don't talk about that much. So because for me, I always believe that the simplest thing is usually the most important. But just to give you an, uh, an idea that we need to make sure that people are doing their job as well to wherever, well, doesn't matter what position they are. So that's my thing. Thank you. Check out my website, narayanforsukram.com. Can you hear me at the back? Yeah. Fellow citizens, citizen groups, political candidates, and future elected officials for 2018-2022. I prepared this at about uh, 5 o'clock this morning. Uh, my name is Myron Daniel Steinman. My legal name is Myron Daniel Steinman. And I am running for mayor of Kitchener. On the ballot, you will see my name is Myron Steinman. Uh, yes. I was asked by a local radio show in 250 words to say what would be on the ballot, what would not be on the ballot if I would not to run for mayor. And I use three words, um, political change in systems, right? And in this region of Waterloo, we have a form of proportional representation, and I will get to that. Uh, as you're aware, aware, mayors of each city and township are members of the lower tier of municipal government. In my case, the city of Kitchener, along with 10 ward councillors from 10 geographical wards, and we are elected by a first-past-the-post system. The mayors are also a member of the second tier of municipal government, in this case the region of Waterloo, so I don't know how that fits into uh, the new systems. but. Uh, you will have a chance to elect four councillors who will, there will be nine people running and they will get it by popular vote, the percentage of popular vote. That is called a form of proportional representation. Uh, I think you gave me one minute there and I'm only done. I believe municipal governments have the greatest opportunity of the four levels of government to build participatory government. That is where oh, I want to skip my creature. That is, participatory democracy is where you have the choice to be more than, but also including, more than a statistic, more than a consultant, more than a taxpayer, 
If you want, you have a chance to be an engaged citizen. The participatory... Okay, I'm going to skip down. Ideally, municipal governments act as a team, and along with staff and citizens, there needs to be flexi flexibility across this team. Oh, I forgot to say that uh, a team includes... I'm out. <laughs> Thanks, Alexandra, to you and your team, as well as uh, everyone from Trinity and St. Matthews for uh, organizing uh, this conversation this afternoon. I think it's so important because, unfortunately, there's not enough of these kinds of opportunities for uh, us as candidates to, to become engaged. And I also want to thank everyone, both in terms of the regional councillor candidates, the regional chairs, and the other mayoral candidates for putting their names forward because it is a big deal to, uh, to do that and it's a lot of work and, and it's such an important part of our local democratic process. Three years ago I, I ran on, on three issues, strong neighbourhoods, a growing economy and a better Kitchener. But today was really not about talking about the past but looking at what are the issues that are community challenges today that collectively uh, at both the city and at the regional level we need to face uh, over the coming four year term. And in the tables that I talked to, and also in reading the sheets on, on the walls, there were three main issues that came up for me. The first one was uh, affordable housing. And when we talk about affordable housing, we're talking about the full spectrum of housing. So we're talking, uh, obviously, that which is highly subsidized, but also ensuring that we uh, provide opportunities for everyone from singles, seniors, families, and so on, to both rent and own housing going forward. Um, the fact that we have a waiting list of over 3,000 uh, individuals or families is just unacceptable and we need to work with our federal and provincial uh, partners to make sure we make better inroads uh, in that. Secondly, um, the issue of supports for mental health and addiction. Uh, this is an issue that's really grappling uh, our community. Uh, it's not one that we can deal with on our own as, uh, as municipal or regional government uh, and really need to rely on, in particular, the province uh, and to a certain degree the federal government to work with us to tackle these challenges, both in terms of uh, supportive housing but also in terms of programs uh, to address uh, the challenges that these individuals, who are our neighbours, who are in some cases our sons and daughters and grandkids, uh, we need to make sure that that happens. And thirdly, we need to focus on job opportunities. We know that we've made some real progress for certain segments of our community, but others are still finding it a challenge. I think the cross-cutting theme that hit all of these areas, though, was more communication. And, and as I move from table to table, and if you read all these sheets, looking for more communication is something that, uh, that continually came up. So, once again, I really want to just take this opportunity to say thank you. I ask for your support in the uh, upcoming uh, election on October 22nd. Visit my website, uh, and if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much.